Hi everyone, welcome to another one of my videos where I talk about things related to data and being a data analyst or a data scientist. So recently I've been um, helping analysts communicate their findings better, okay, because a lot of the time they do great piece of analysis, but because they're not really um, thought about how they communicate their findings to their audiences, it doesn't have the impact that it should do. So what I thought I'd do in this video is tell you about the th three key tips that I would give you in terms of making sure that you communicate your findings better so therefore they have more impact and your audience is more likely to take them on board. So the first thing I would suggest you do is make sure that you provide context, okay? A lot of the time analysts just go straight into their findings and they don't provide the context, which means that you sometimes lose the audience, if not a lot of the times, okay? So the first thing you should always do is that even if you don't put it in your presentation or your uh, document or whatever, if you're presenting it, at least give that a context verbally, okay, or orally, okay? Um, if you are providing a, um, a written document, then obviously put it in the written document. But if you're presenting, this is mainly around if you're presenting, if you're presenting, you may not want to put it in the deck because it's going to take up a lot of uh, space on your deck that you don't want it to do. And also, it is quite a lot of probably text heavy. So just explain it. So explain the context. And usually what this is, is why are you doing the analysis, okay? What is the hypothesis that you're trying to answer? What are the questions that the business had? What are the challenges that the business had? And why you're doing this piece of analysis or why you did this this piece of analysis um, and why you're presenting it to them now to help them answer those, those questions. The second part of context is what data you use to answer those questions. Now sometimes you take it as a given that you've done all the due diligence, you've audited the data and you've used the best data for the analysis but the business doesn't know that, your audience don't, doesn't know that. So what you should really do is explain the context of the data. So I'll give you an example, let's say um, you did an offline promotion, a promotion on, news, on a, in a newspaper okay and you wanted to know how many people turned up to take up that that offer um, or how many people turned up because of that offer to your store. So what you decide to do is look at your transactional data. But the problem when you look at your transactional data is that people who turned up and bought something from the offer will turn up on your transactional database. If I turn up because of the offer and then I leave because it, it wasn't really what I wanted, then you won't capture my data. Or if I turn up because of the offer but then I decide to buy something else, not something related to the debt related to the offer, then you won't also, also pick me up. So there are limitations in the data set that you use in order to answer the question. So you've got to make that very explicit. You've got to say, look, I've used this data set because it provides the best way of answering this business question. And yes, there are limitations. These are the limitations and I've acknowledged that in my analysis. So make sure you provide that context as well. So the two con components of context are, one is what is the question that you're trying to answer? And the other piece of context is what is the data that you use to answer those questions? So the second thing you should do uh, when, when you're presenting your finding is think about the terms or the acronyms or the um, variable names that you're using. Don't forget, you may be very familiar with them because you're, you've been using them a lot, but your audience may not be. So even something like ARPU, let's say ARPU, okay, someone, people may not know what ARPU is, okay, but then you might spell it out and say average revenue per user. And even then some people may not know, well, I, get, I, know, what it, I know what it's supposed to mean is average revenue per user, but how is it calculated? What does it mean in our context, okay? Is it average revenue per user for a 12 month period, for a one month period, for a lifetime period? What is it, okay? So you need to explain your terms, even something like lifetime value or LTV, uh, you might use LTV or lifetime value, you've got to again explain how did you calculate lifetime value, okay? And variable names, if you use variable names that come out of the database, don't forget the business won't be familiar with that. So for example, you might have trans, uh, price, okay? The, 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 they may not know what you're talking about when you say price. Price may be the price related to the item, is it gross, is it net, you know, all those kind of stuff. So you've got to make sure that you explain to the business the variables that you use and what they mean, okay? And again, same with the terms. If you're using terms, uh, even if you spell it out, even if you say lifetime value or average revenue per user, okay? Spell it out what it means. Say, look, when we calculate average revenue per user, we look at the revenue that someone makes on a monthly basis over the last 12 months, and that's their average revenue per user. Or we look at their annual revenue and we make uh, that the av average uh, revenue per user. But explain it to them because there'll be a lot of people in the room who may not understand this and they may be hesitant to again ask you uh, what it means in that in that meeting. Uh, so therefore you would have lost them and you know the impact that you're gonna have, you won't have because people don't understand what it is that you're talking about. And then the final thing is, which I'm still guilty about, is that when you're presenting, you're in a flow because you've rehearsed it or you've done the analysis and you know what you want to say, okay? But what you don't give is windows of opportunity for people to ask questions, okay? It is very important as an analyst that you allow people to ask, ask questions about the data itself, about the methodology, about your approach, but also ask for clarification, okay? So you need to provide opportunities within your presentation where you might get to an end of a slide or end of a couple of slides and then say, okay, I've just covered off the methodology. Does anyone have any questions or does anyone need anything to be clarified, okay? And you need to build that into your uh, style of presenting and your style of communication. Okay, even if 
you're not presenting a deck, let's say you've been asked to uh, talk about something, you need to be able to pause once in a while, okay? Again, I, I have difficulty with this. I sometimes go in a flow and I go from one item to another and I forget about my audience. I forget that I need to ask them if they've understood what I've said, if they have any questions related to what I've just said. And because at that moment they might have questions, but later on that question becomes irrelevant. So it's always good to give them the opportunity to ask that question there. But even clarification, you know, a lot of the time you're going to talk about things that people just want clarification. Once you've clarified it, it they go, wow, I, they go, aha, I, I know what it means. And that means they can carry on uh, understanding the rest of your presentation. Whereas if they've not got clarification on one part, then they'll probably not understand fully uh, your presentation or your or the thing that you're trying to communicate. Okay, so there's sort of the three key tips that I'll give you around, um, you know, how to communicate better with your audience so that your findings have a better impact. So if you're a data analyst, okay, think about these things, okay, make sure you provide context to your analysis, make sure you provide uh, descriptions or uh, 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 explain the terminologies that you're using, and finally give your audience an opportunity to ask questions or ask for clarifications, okay. Now what I might do is actually do a separate video where I talk about a lot of the acronyms and terms that are used in the analytical space because uh, again a lot of you may not be familiar with them and especially when I was starting off in the analytical space there were terms being used that I didn't that I wasn't familiar with I had to like f find out myself so I'll probably do a video on that just to explain all the different terms well thank you for watching my video I hope you found it useful um, if you have any questions please put them in the comment sections below please do uh, like my video and of course subscribe to my channel thank you